Alright, so my name is Persiano and today I'm just going to be doing a quick presentation um, on our tree dish. So let's get started. Alright, so before I actually begin, I just want to just get into how I got into the hobby um, and like, all the things I'm interested in. So, first thing is I like office escaping um, because of you know, one of the things I do. I have a lot of skates at my house. Um, and you know, I'm entering you know, a, a fish show every time it comes around over here. Um, also like, um, I also like salt water, something I'm starting to get into now too. So, um, just a lot of like, now fish and now reef, you know, all that stuff is pretty cool to me. Um, and also finally exotic fish. Um, ever since I was young, I um, always loved exotics. So I didn't really care for like the guppies or the mollies or you know all the other you know regular fish. I wanted stuff that you can't find um, very often. Um, so you know I knew archer fish was one of those fish when I was younger that you know was cool, had a unique ability. Um, so I always wanted it. And also I just want to mention that I also do a YouTube channel as well it's called Offscaping 101. And I make videos um, all about you know my fish and I just combine all these three things for that channel. So um, if you want to check it out, you can, but that's basically what I'm into. Alright, so I want to talk about what are archer fish, uh, for those who may not know what they are. So, uh, so this is a fish that has the unique capability to spit water to knock down prey of a bug. So where they live there are you know, shallow mangrove forests with branches um, up above the water and then there's always bugs crawling around um, up above them and you know over the time they evolve to have that capability to spit water um, and you know to be able to hit them with precision accuracy they can also determine how much water water they are spitting to you know, knock on the fish um, in this photo right here you can see my archer fish is spitting at um, some dry shrimp and right next to it is my night goby and um, you know, the archer noticed that there's a fish nearby so it will determine how much force and how much water it will spit because it just spits randomly there's a good chance that another fish nearby will probably get Oh, well, they'll probably get to the uh, food before the archer does, so you know they know how much force um, and how much water to use, which is really cool. And I'll give credit to the person who took that photo. That is from uh, Jimmy from the Suzuki channel. He has really good photos and videos. He edits for a uh, uh, for a co-op and um, that YouTube channel. So you know when he came down here, he took that really great shot. Um, and that's you know, actually my favorite photo of uh, my archers, but. Um, so they can also jump for food, and I've noticed that um, a lot um, recently because you know they're starting to mature, they're getting bigger, and you know um, they know now that like it's starting to get to the point where they can jump for food um, like higher than they could before, and so you know it always surprises me you know how high they can jump and. You know, usually I put food kind of high because I want them to spit the food, not jump. But often they just, you know, like to jump the food now. So I'm gonna have to, you know, find something different to get them to spit more. But um, and also another cool thing is they can adjust for the water distortion. So basically, archer fish, their view um, is to the food is distorted. So basically, they so I have dry shrimp up there. They don't see that at, at like a complete straight line. It's distorted for them, but they can adjust for that, which is really cool. Um, and not many fish can, uh, or not many fish have the capability to do that. So, all right. So that's just basically what they are. So I'm just gonna play a video um, about marchers, just do some uh, shows them spinning. So. Uh, oh, there we go. Alright, so, um, playing all along, not playing the whole, but, um, so here are the ones I have, um, in this hand. I have branches up above, and then all the time, you know, I just normally feed it like that. 
Photoshop for it. Uh, you can know, slide your puffer in there as well, mono, um, just uh, some other stuff to keep in that tank. It's not really a nice looking tank, but I just, you know, just got this little reptile branch off of Amazon, and I just placed it up there, and then that's what I normally use to uh, you know, feed the archers, and also on the glass as well, with another little bit of jumping. And that's like one of the times where I did think it could jump that high, but that was, um, you know, that's a way to surprise me. But, yeah, they're really cool. They're, they're my favorite. They should be by far. And, um, yeah. They're kind of there too. They're looking for it. Wow. Yeah, so they can, they jump, uh, like, a kind of a lot now, like I was saying, so. Alright, so I'll talk about the main species of archers that you will find in the hobby. So the two first ones that I have, the two ones, uh, the two that I have first are the seven spot archers and the banded archer fish. So these two get mixed up, uh, get mixed up very often. Um, you know, normally you'll see seven spot archers being sold as banded archers because that's the normal common archer fish that you you know you will see at uh, pet stores. Um, you know, there's a way you can tell the difference, um, and basically in the name, you know, you want to look for seven to eight spots on the archer, so the one in the photo, um, you know, you can pick out has it on eight spots, and normally the spots will, you know, have a pattern, big, small, big, small, so that's something you want to look for, and the banded archer fish, they will have around four or five, maybe sometimes six spots, and the are all the same size, so that's, the, so that's the way you can tell. Um, the archers that I have are the seven spots. I got them at um, Petland Call, you know, they, um, you know, we're starting to close down, but um, those, are, those, are, those are the ones I have. The last one are Calabria archers, and these are starting to become more popular in the hobby. You may have seen them, um, you know, people who do YouTube, you know, they make some videos on them now. Um, what's so interesting about these guys is these are a pure freshwater archer. Um, the other species that um, are in the hobby are all brackish water, brackish to salt water. This is the very, there's like not many that can say pure salt, I'm oh, sorry, pure salt, but um, in pure fresh water their entire life. And this is the only one I have known in the hobby that can say, uh, or, or currently right now that stays in pure fresh water. Um, I remember seeing this five, six years ago at Milan Look at it was like $75. Because um, it was a rare thing at the time, you know, it was starting to get into the hobby and over the years, um, you know, this is becoming more popular now, um, you know, more people are starting to bring it in, and I'm um, get it for me around $30. Um, so the next time um, the store breaks them in, I'm going to go grab a few because, um, you know, they're really cool and you don't have to deal with all the brackish water stuff. And you know, those guys do really great in, like, um, you know, kind of big community tanks, so you can put some, like, rainbows or some more with those guys. All right, but for the seven spots and the bandits, um, I just want to talk about those guys because um, uh, those are the more common ones. Sorry, I don't know why the photos are kind of cut off, the photos are kind of words there. But so these guys um, are found from Australia, around in Australia, um, and you know, they're from Southeast Asia as well. There's some species that live in Africa. Um, two, um, I know some people who live in Australia and they tell me about whenever they go kayaking um, you know, on the rivers there, they always see a lot of archer fish uh, swimming, which is really cool. Um, normally they, they told me that they see the uh, seven spotted, but uh, apparently they're a uh, common thing in Australia. Uh, so that's cool that they get to see them. Um, temperature, anywhere around 70 to 80 degrees is what I keep mine at. Um, you don't really need to worry about that too much. This is a hardy fish. Um, they can, you know, handle, you know, if you, you know, make it a little bit more, a little bit less. But they're a pretty hardy fish um, for temperature. pH, uh, anywhere from seven to eight. But again, you know, they are hardy. They, uh, you know, they don't have to stay uh, always um, in that range. And salinity, that's, um, you know, where you uh, want to be a little bit more careful. So salinity. Um, I keep mine at 1.009. I think that was the last time, uh, that was the last measurement I took. Um, and, um, you know, you can keep, if you're actually when they're a little younger, you can keep them around, you know, uh, 1.0082, 1.0012. 1 
And when they get bigger, you can um, push that to closer to salt water, maybe a little bit of low salt water. Um, but you know, they stay, they are brackish water fish. Unless you, uh, if you don't get the clogs, if you get the bandits, you want to have a brackish water system. So that's always important because they won't grow, they will uh, not last too long. Um, but anywhere around there is where you want to have them at. Um, and now, these things can be bred in captivity. It's a very thing to, uh, it's a rare sight to see them, um, you know, being bred in captivity. I heard one instance here, someone part, uh, someone, someone part of this fish club was able to get them to spawn. But, um, you know, on YouTube there's some videos of people getting them to breed. Um, and I don't have the system to do that, or I don't have the numbers of archers to get them to breed, but, um, you know, it is possible. And if you do get them to breed, they will release up to 3,000 eggs. And those eggs, well, not all of them will last, but all of them, those eggs will flow on surface water, and around 12 to 15 um, hours later, they will be, um, or they will hatch, and pretty much they're on their own from there. But, you know, if you can get them to breed, that's a really cool thing. Not too many people can do that. Um, so, food or feeding, they pretty much eat anything. Um, I throw whatever into the tank. Um, you know, if you want to have them, have, you want to make sure that they have a meaty diet. Um, so, frozen foods work well. Uh, I feed mine a mixture of frozen uh, brine shrimp and some dry shrimp. That's what I used to have them uh, you know, spit. But, you know, you want to have them at, you want to just have a meaty diet. You can also do live food if you want to. Um, you can do live uh, brine uh, once in a while, or you can go shrimp too um, if you wanted to. And you can also do um, legs and pellets if you wanted to. Um, that would really recommend that being your main, um, or be, or be, I don't recommend um, that, you know, you use legs or pellets as your main diet for these guys because, you know, they're not really the most nutritious foods as you know, and um, you, know, you want to make sure that they're always good looking and healthy. And if you want to, you can always do crickets or um, some kind of bug you know, to have them spit at. Um, if I find like, a spider or like, a small cockroach around my house, I'll just throw it in the tank and then, you know, it's our first come first serve and they're always going for the food. And that's the cool thing about these guys, um, you know, they're always hungry. So, you know, if I keep eating them, they'll keep eating no matter what. Um, but yeah, so they eat anything. They're not picky eaters at all. Um, tank mates, so, um, if you wanted to have some tank meats there, you can always put some puffers, um, some monos as well, um, those diamond fish, um, that's what monos are, and scats. Um, but you want to put anything that's too small because they don't eat anything that they can um, fit in their mouth. So if you want to eat like brackish water mollies, just make sure they're not really small or any fried because you know, they'll get eaten up really fast. And for a full grown fish, uh, I'm going to go anywhere lower than 100 gallons. Um, I want to upgrade my system so that, you know, they can, so they can be a permanent home for these guys. But, um, anywhere, like, a 125 gallon tank is really cool. And you can do it a whole mangrove system if you wanted to as well. Um, I heard of people who have done kind of a beach area too, and the water, they have marsh fish, and they have mud stickers on the beach as well. And they can, you know, coexist, uh, coexist, uh, with each other. And um, that's something cool that I want to try when I uh, get older. But, you know, just anywhere around there is good. And for the price of these guys, you know, I'm sure you're really paying any, anything more than 20 bucks. Um, they're, uh, I see them cheaper, like at $10, but normally you'll pay $20 for the bandits. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, so yeah, I don't have a folder, but um, folders are uh, cutting off the text there. Um, that never happened when I was uh, editing it, but um, personal experiences with keeping this fish, you just want to keep them in groups of three or more, or at least have, or just have one. You don't want to have a pair, because if you have a pair, you, those two are going to keep fighting for the food, and it gets to the point where one of them gets killed, um, and that has happened to me before, so you know, just 
Um, you know, we have three of them in the tank that kind of balances that uh, balance the pressure out. Um, that's kind of like the golden, that's kind of the rule of thumb for kind of a lot of other fish, but you just want to have them and use the three or you know, just keep them at, uh, just keep one in the tank. And for me, uh, I have fish in the tank, but I learned that it is actually better, or for my own opinion, I like to have them in a species only tank. Now, the reason for that is, these guys are smart. If there's another fish nearby, they will not spit for the food. And uh, when I'm trying to film a video of these guys spitting, um, normally I'll, they will start to walk, but if like, a pumper comes swimming by, they will back down and I won't get the shot. You know? And I'm there just you know, waiting for them to get the, uh, waiting for the right moment for them to spit. Um, so they're always really smart about that. And the fish in the tank know that the archer fish is going to spit for the food. They realize what they're doing. And the food will, and you know, when they, when they notice that the archer is going up, they will follow the archer, um, hoping that the food lands uh, right in front of them so they can you know, steal the archer's food. But, you know, for me, it's better to keep them in a species only tank. Um, you know, just, it, that's up to you, but that's in my opinion. Um, also, these things will eat. So like I was saying earlier, these things will not stop eating no matter what. If I uh, I have some pumpers in the tank now. Um, the tank now is kind of different. I have um, two avocado pumpers in the tank, and those guys are kind of slow eaters. So I remember one time um, I just threw a little extra food in there uh, for the avocados, and the, the avocados were getting to it. But the archers kept stuffing their mouths with the food to the point where you know dry shrimp were just sticking out of their mouth, and then you know they kept just like. Uh, burning out um, the food because you know they couldn't digest it. So you want to watch that. You want to make sure they're overeating. Be, but because you know the reason they do that is because of the wild. You know they don't know when the next time they're gonna get food is right. So it's kind of like you know take advantage of what you got um, because you know like I said you never know. You know. They never know when the next time they're gonna eat. Um, so that's why they're always making. That's why they're always just trying to be the first ones to get the food um, and. Like you saw in the video, um, you know, these guys can actually make a really cool acrobatic jump, like a curve jump. So pretty much the floor right there, I'm um, starts kind of faint, but I have an arrow there, and that kind of shows the archer's path to get the food on the branch. The, the food's on top of the branch, um, so you know normally that straight um, jump off won't be able to cut it, or won't cut it for the um, archer. So they. Um, learn to have a curved jump, which is really cool, um, and you know that happens kind of often, and so that's like you know, a cool thing to see in my tank. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do a simple presentation just to hopefully get some people interested in archers. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and um, yeah. Size they get to? Oh, the larger size will probably be around, be around a foot long. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that can happen. Um, it will take a while that's happened, but they get pretty big. Uh, yeah. What's that thing on the stick? Uh, what thing? What do you think on the stick? Oh, that's a fish. The larger fish? No, it's, uh, it's a photo of it jumping up. Like in fast, like in normal speed, or the normal video, we'll just have the fish go up and jump down. What's the lifespan? Uh, lifespan, yeah, in the wild, um, it's around two years, but in captivity, um, normally people will have them, like aquariums, uh, will have them around eight to ten. So they live long, way longer in captivity. All right, thank you. Thank you, Carson. Wow, who knew they were real bad big? I'm going to put them. That's a lot of crickets. Where did your guest comedian come in?